Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. And in front of me, I have a new 3D printer to unbox. This is the Ender 7 by Creality. So in this video, we'll unbox it, we'll see what it comes with, we'll take a look at the printer itself and talk about the specs. And then as always, after I have a little bit of time to really get to know the machine and put it through its paces, I'll have my full review of the Ender 7 in a follow-up video. But in this one, we'll unbox it and take a look at it. Uh, this Ender 7 was graciously sent to me by Creality3D.shop, which is an online retailer of Creality 3D printers and accessories. So if you're interested in the machine and want to go know a little bit more information about it, I have a link in the description down below to Creality3D.shop. And if you're really interested in the machine and want to pick one up for yourself, you can use the coupon code HOFFMANE7 to get 10% off of an Ender 7 for yourself. So with that out of the way, Let's start unboxing the Ender 7. So the Ender line of printers is a uh, pretty well known in the 3D printer, printer industry. Um, the Ender 3 is probably the most popular entry level 3D printer these days. So there's a lot to be expected from the Creality printers. And there's a lot of packing tape on this packaging. So let me just take a second to cut through all of this and we can start talking about the Ender 7 itself. So the Ender 7 is a FDM 3D printer. It uses a standard 0.75 millimeter filament. And it has a lot of foam for the packaging. So let's start breaking into it. Let's remove first layer of foam. Um, it is a partially assembled 3D printer. So it comes in a few different parts that we'll have to assemble ourselves. Um, first, we have packaging, so there's a user manual. manual. Um, that's always nice to have. It comes with a roll of white PLA plus, uh, half a kilogram of it. So that's cool that it comes with its own filaments. Um, but of course, you can use your own standard PLA, uh, PEZG, ABS, um, those kind of filaments. And then the first major bit is the extruder assembly itself. There we go. So this is the top of the machine. This is where the hot end and nozzle, as well as the Bowden extruder is attached. And both of the X and Y motors. So the interesting thing about the Ender 7 is that it is a core XY machine, which means that instead of having a single motor that controls the X-axis and a single motor that controls the Y-axis, it actually uses both of the two motors uh, and a nice little belt loop in order to control the motion of the, uh, the print head. Um, and what the core XY structure gives us um, is really fast print speeds. Um, it can help cut down on resonance of actually having to move the motor along one of the axes. So since both motors are stationary, you can move the print head pretty fast. Um, that also is helped by the fact that this uses uh, linear rails. So it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually linear rails that move in the X and the Y uh, that gives really smooth motion and a pretty rigid structure. Um, as for the extruder itself, it comes with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, uh, which is a pretty standard nozzle size. Um, however, one of the big selling points of the Ender 7 is a really fast print speed. So they are uh, advertising 250 millimeters per second of print speed. So for instance, uh, most of these printers behind me, they'll be about, you know, anywhere between 50 millimeters to maybe 70 or 100 millimeters per second. So if this reaches the advertised 250 millimeter, print, millimeter per second print speed, that is a big boost. Uh, so I can't wait to actually put that to the test and see if it can reach those kinds of speeds. Let me put this down and we will get to the rest of it. Um, that looks to actually be bolted there. So let me grab a bit of the packaging to prop it up on. Okay, let's continue. 
Um, they have a box that contains a bunch of accessories. So we have a USB as well as a micro SD card. Um, so you can print both, you know, connecting up to a USB drive or you can connect it up to your computer via the USB ports. Um, or it also has an SD card slots uh, for you to upload files. It comes with a couple of extra nozzles. It has the power cord. It has some tools. So all of the tools that would be needed to assemble the machine, because as you can tell, it is partially assembled, um, as well as a spool holder, nuts and bolts for assembly, and a scraper to help you get the part off the print bed. So standard accessories, but it's good that it comes with uh, a few of those. So these are the parts needed for the assembly. These are the, uh, the Z-axis struts, um, which will attach the bottom section, which is still in the box, to the top section. This is a uh, cantilevered heated bed design. So the bed sticks out of uh, Z-axis support on the back. Um, and the bed moves up and down for the Z-axis. The bed itself is a silicon carbide heated bed uh, that's rated up to 100 degrees Celsius, so perfect for printing PLA or ABS or PET Geon. Um, so your kind of standard filaments there. Uh, and yeah, that's what it looks like. These motors look pretty beefy, so that's exciting to see. And I'll put this down here. And then I think the last remaining bits in the box is the bottom section. And as you can tell, this is a pretty big printer. So here is the bottom of the printer. Let's move the box off of here. So on the bottom, there is the touchscreen and the electronics. So this is controlled via a small four inch touch screen. Uh, so that's really cool to see on a printer like this. This feels really well put together, really solid printer, um, just from the, the, the weight and the assembly of the bottom here. Over to the side, as you can see where the uh, USB type C input is and the SD card slots. I didn't actually notice that that was a USB type C there, but this is, a normal USB. This is a USB-A slot here. So is there a USB-A? There is not. Very interesting. I would have expected to see a USB-A here. So maybe there's a dongle or a attachment uh, there. So let's see, a few of the other selling points for this printer. Uh, it has a print area of 250 millimeters by 250 millimeters by 300 millimeters. Uh, that's roughly 10 inches by 10 inches by 12 inch print area, um, which is a pretty good size. Uh, it's not the largest in the industry, but uh, those print sizes are more than adequate for your everyday prints. Um, and the key selling point of the Ender 7 is the print speed. Uh, so it's okay to cut down on a little bit of size uh, to really get that speed. The hot end itself, um, in order to accommodate for that speed, uh, the nozzle and the hot end are specially designed to have a larger melting zone so that you can really pump more filaments through as you're printing and get up to those uh, print speeds. And in order to facilitate uh, printing at such a fast speed, you need adequate cooling in order to do that. So the hot end itself has two cooling fans pointed on both sides, pointing down towards the middle. So you really get uh, dual cooling in that way. Um, it is a Bowden style printer. So the extruder is off to the side and it has a uh, dual geared all metal extruder over here. Uh, so that should really grip the filament and push it from the extruder into the hot end. As for other features that the Ender 7 comes with is that it comes with uh, a filament detector 
So it can tell you and alert you if your filament runs out. Um, it also has uh, resume printing functionality. So if the power cuts out um, or if the print is stopped mid print, you're able to resume uh, where it left off, which is a really handy feature uh, to have on a 3D printer. So let's get more of this packaging away, shall we? If we know that this is just the bottom section and there's nothing else remaining in the box, we can put that over to the side. And then here is where all of the uh, different pieces are. So let's get a lot of this packaging away. Here is the main Z assembly. So this will get mounted to the back. So you can see it's just a single Z axis uh, that the bed is cantilevered off of here. I'm running out of space. We'll put this on here very carefully. Here is one of the side rails and here's the other. This will be mounted like this to support the top of the printer. These feel very sturdy and I'm sure once they're bolted, you'll have a really rigid printer because that's really important if you're trying to print fast, you need that rigidity so that it's not shaking all over the place. Um, here is the heated bed. It comes all pre-assembled for you. Um, there is no automatic bed leveling on the Ender 7, uh, but it has uh, four knobs on each of the, one knob on each of the corner, and it has a manual um, kind of leveling assist within the software itself, where it can help you move the extruder or move the nozzle from corner to corner so that you can adjust the knob and it'll help you level the bed. The bed itself is their uh, silicon carbide glass bed. Should be pretty good to print on. A nice solid print surface there. Uh, and it is a 24 volt print bed. So should heat up pretty quick. We'll be sure to test that during the review. See how quick it heats up should be more than good to print your standard filaments there. We'll set that over here. And anything else, there's a couple of brackets and another bracket. We'll put those off to the side. And I think that's it for the packaging. So that is a very, very quick and very simple unboxing. You know it's a good 3D printer when it's like that. Uh, since it only looks like it's you know four major parts, uh, you have the bottom, the bed assembly, and the top section. Uh, I don't expect assembly to take much, if at all, any time um, to really get it up and running, but I guess we'll find that out during the review. So thank you all for joining me on this unboxing. It was a really quick one. I am excited to try out the Ender 7. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer them. If you want to find out more information about the Ender 7 itself, you can check the link to creality3d.shop in the description down below. And if you have anything specific you would like for me to test during my review of the Ender 7, also leave that down in the comments. Uh, so thank you all for watching. I'm excited to try out the Ender 7 and I hope you're excited for the follow-up review. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time.